Hello, hello, everybody. Okay, back to part three. We have um, like snow and freezing rain outside. You see the snow there? So I had to make myself a cup of chai, of mushroom chai. It's so good. So I have been just doing some little touches on Buddha here. So his hands have a finger and a thumb. They're totally different proportions each hand, but like I'm down with that. And look at the rainbow going up. So I painted the white, we're gonna talk about that, over the black so that then when I paint the color, hi Araya, and um, I painted his arms in a little bit and tweaked the arms. This one needed the elbow down a little bit more, but I really liked when all the background was showing through. So when I add color to his body, I may do that. We'll see. And then I've added all these little stars in that just seem to be a theme these days. So I'm going to, some of them need some white or something. Well, that looks like it got smeared somehow. Anyway, over the black and painted his necklace to double chain, like a, a little mala necklace, of course. And what else? So right now I was waiting for you guys to paint the rainbow. Mm. That feels the most fun and easy and super clear right now. I don't have, you know, seven different rays of the rainbow, but I'm gonna try and do a little blend blend ombre like my overalls. Okay, let's see. So I have red and yellow here. So I'm gonna start with red, maybe I'll just add a little pink into that red and go. I'm kind of curious too about making the making the rainbow kind of glowing up from his hands. And I'm just painting it right over the frame. So this canvas um, originally, way back when, was the first um, well, it was technically, I guess, maybe the second ever, but my first oil painting, I was like kind of excited to explore oils. And then I got pregnant with my daughter, who's now 23. And <clears throat> I don't know if there's a reason to be not be painting with oils when you're pregnant. But anyway, that was the end of that. But so it was a painting of this underneath this first layer of this canvas was this very non-Whitney painting of a woman sitting in a comfy chair, relaxing and like a window and a lamp and anyway, kind of weird. And, but we got it framed. I liked it because it made me feel relaxed. Like, oh, that's what I do. I just relax regularly. And we got it framed in this big frame and, you know, it got to the point at some point where I was like, oh, what am I gonna do with this canvas? Like, it just didn't feel like me when I moved into my own house in 2012, left the marriage house. And so I put it on the kitchen wall and it became the Make Your Mark canvas. And literally um, there were multiple times that my son um, would be helping me like get ready for dinner and I'd have leftover paint from a painting I was painting. And I would ask him if he would go paint the leftover paint on the Make Your Mark canvas. And that's kind of how I kept him painting. And of course the girls would help me too. And so this painting has been so many, like this canvas has been so many different things. So there's lots of texture, but um, it was pretty fun painting over this frame too. And for a little while I tried to imagine into kind of offering these canvases but basically you just like if you can find one at a yard sale or something an estate sale the trick is to have 
a nice wide frame so that it's kind of protecting your um, wall. I haven't gotten any paint on the wall. Okay, so now red, orange, yellow, green. So we'll do yellow. I'm just kind of merging the colors. Two colors per ray. I like how graphic things look with the black coming through. I kind of like that. So that's not going to cover that up, so I'll have to get some white. Get this down first. Now I'll get some white and just paint over this, and then we'll have to go. So I could have probably painted there's some black there too. I'm just going with that. I'm like talking to myself even though I'm talking to you guys. Um, I painted white over the black for this rainbow so that the colors would really pop. Okay. So now I'm gonna get some of our turquoisey green again. with this yellow. I'm trying to go. This is a slightly weird angle. I don't normally paint with the canvas this high up, but super convenient to just be able to paint right here on the wall. I just dipped my brush in the yellow again so we could kind of blend. All right, all right, all right. Looking rainbowy. Now I'm going to get the blue. Oh, it's so fun. It's funny how many things I have rainbows on. It's all about that Rainbow Warrior prophecy, which someone suggested. Oh. Um, someone suggested in a comment under one of my posts that. Um, oh, I guess we can do a whole blue. Oh, we can go to purple and magenta. That the Rainbow Warrior prophecy was a prophecy created by like white missionaries. And I hadn't heard that before. I looked up Rainbow Warrior Prophecy so many times, and people, they all said that, um, you know, it was a prophecy that was shared by multiple tribes over the years. And, yeah, so, I don't know. I guess I have... I might add some white in this big blue. And then purple. So I'm just gonna mix magenta with that cerulean that I just painted to create the purple. Whoops. Or indigo. Oh yeah. Got to add a little white. I almost always have to add white to the purple. Just get that down here. Do you all find yourself talking to yourself while you paint? <laughs> so if you don't have music going, you're not singing. I went over the black a little bit there. Oh, I could just scrape it. Okay, we'll just add a little bit of purple there too. Nice, nice. I can add a little yellow up top there over this white. I'm 
just makes you happy, doesn't it? The rainbow stuff. Okay. Oh, how fun is that? Okay, take a step back. Yes. Yeah, so here's what I'm thinking is if I add a little bit of white, I'll start with the purple since that's what I have on the brush. I add some white and kind of right, and then blue. Of course, I made into purple. I guess I could have done this right at the beginning. That look, yes, adding a little contrast, a little variety to this white, to the colors. So now we've got a mix light green. Super light. Looks like the yellow. Now I'm just going to go into the pure white without cleaning my brush too much. Okay. And then orange. I need a little more yellow. Oh my gosh. How many? Oh. There's just a little the fluorescent. I was just gonna say, I haven't even gotten to fluorescent pink yet. Which I really like to have fluorescent pink. Okay, so I'm just adding white into these colors. So. I don't know, is it, can you see a big difference? Okay, then I'll just go straight to red and white. There we go. There. Hi, Deborah. I love, we're getting different people every time I come on. So you'll be able to find the part one and part two to this. From here, it looks um, a little different, but okay, and then this star, we could I didn't go get the gold paint, but I am going to use some gold paint at some point. I just have to run out to the studio. Um, I'm just going to paint. Sometimes you got to just paint with what's in the palette, right? I'm going to do another layer. It's got a little yellow in it. The star theme just kind of happened. And it's kind of a theme these days, just spaciousness. I think 
think maybe, you know, it's easy to feel like everything is off the walls these days. <laughs> um, so I think the spaciousness is helping. Mm. What if I added a little, where's my little brush? Um, so I think maybe all the spaciousness is around like, okay, we have the opportunity. We have more opportunities than we know to do things differently on this planet. It is within our reach. I'm not sure that did what I wanted it to do. That's okay. So if, oh, so if you're just joining, one of the things we've been talking about is, I'm sure that added something, is the opportunity within our painting to practice being unconditionally accepting of ourselves and whatever we're painting, right? We get so critical. And when we get critical, think of it as like, the inner critic is dependent on there being a finished product. Hi, Micah, hi, Trina. Um, the inner critic is dependent on there being a finished product that other people might judge, right? Um, and what we know about painting with acrylics, which is why I do, is that we can constantly create change, right? Constantly. So why or how can we be super critical of ourselves if we know we're just going to keep going with the canvas, right? Like, but we have these ideas around, you know, time frames and things. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm making these beads look a little more intentional. Um, but we have these ideas about things being finished or how much time they should take or how it should go. What if you forgot all the shoulds and just let each painting kind of have its own timing, its own personality, and trust that it's providing you with exactly the experience that you're meant to have. So when the inner critic comes up, you just, you don't hate on it or like tell it it's bad or wrong. You just say, you know what? You're trying to keep me safe and I don't have to protect myself from <laughs> painting. And so you can, enjoy a well-deserved, you know, siesta. And eventually that inner critic will learn to take its proper place as discernment, as like, you know, when you need to make sure you're at the right place, the right time, Right, click the right link, things like that. So, so this is a goal. Oh, why do I keep doing that? Um, is to allow the painting to to be exactly what it's intended to be, which I trust is like to serve our highest good to. We're here to create. And so if the canvas is gonna show us where we might get stuck, right? Where we're too hard on ourselves, it's gonna give us the experience of that so that we can practice, you know, overcoming that inner critic. So, so I'm liking his face, the more I've looked at it and everything, right? Um, I do feel like I wanna bring you know, more of this back to the arms. I'm kind of digging 
all these circles up here. A lot of the Laughing Buddhas are holding these two balls, which I don't remember what those symbolize. I used to know. <laughs> um, but so I'm kind of feeling like maybe these are those two balls. So, hi Stacy, hi Melinda. So let's see if I kind of define those a little bit, the black, and maybe get rid of some of the stuff. I kind of like this little gold circle. There's a pink circle. Okay, this is one of my favorite things to do when we are, so I'll just use this as an example because um, I don't know, this makes me so happy. Um, so we've got this big circle here, right? Here's kind of a circle within the circle. You can imagine that's a circle, maybe they're multiple. Anyway, so I drew this circle, which makes it look like, you know, it's a pink circle, right? And then this one circled the gold and the green and all that. So maybe I'll do that in a couple other places. And then where I can connect all this black, right? Black background. But then I'm going to take another brush and maybe I'll create um, this purple, whatever color this is going to be. And I'll make some circles here. Oh, well, these are, oh, there we go. And then kind of paint around, wow, it's weird. It's almost hard to explain. So what happens, where's, I need more of this. So what happens is it's like the negative space becomes the positive space. Hmm. It's like now I don't even remember how I do it. So I'm outlining there. Oh, okay. And so then maybe there's a black circle. This is funny. And then you're painting, cha, whoops. And it's not about being perfect, it's about playing, learning. Okay, so then I'm gonna merge kind of the black with the blue, which needs some white, otherwise you can't see it. So now, kind of the blue becomes a background which could merge into the yellow greeny. Okay, there we go. This one's a little wonky. We'll put something bigger over that. So now, oh, I don't know if you can tell. So see how that space just became, okay, let me, ooh, I just had an inspiration. So if I put some white down, to see that black better, right? Because black and white are opposite colors. And then blend that. See, so it's like you can't tell where one thing begins and another ends. some black in here just to kind of show you. Ah, oh, now I have two brushes with black. 
Okay, now maybe let's go back to some kind of pinky color. And, right, because I had pink in there. And then if you decide like, oh, I like the black, you just go back over. Ah. So I'll probably outline that star in black again. I get some just red. Go around this guy. Yeah. I love all this because for me it's like this meditation on this kind of boundless nature. If you've done vision quests or the coaching training, remember um, remember Dr. Jill? Okay, so can you kind of see how that, isn't that just fun? It's these little things. Hi, Kate. Hi, Stacy. Um, it's the little things that get me excited. So now it almost looks like it's dripping. Kind of, sort of. So I'm going to want to blend this pink back into the black. What do I have going on here? So I could blend some of this blue in with it. Bring the blue down into the black. And then go back to black. Do you guys know I met Jack Black this summer? He was, <laughs> he was at the tramway when we were about to go up paragliding. And actually my son's friend, Chase Murray, remember that name, he wants to be like a, the next Jim Carrey kind of guy. And he went up and like had a conversation with Jack Black and asked him about, um, his, uh, his advice and stuff. And Jack was super sweet and he was wearing this like, you know, those um, velvet rugs, like the Elvis, you know, like the black t-shirt with this big wolf in the moon and it was hysterical. But anyway, when I just said black like that, I was like, oh, right, Jack. Um, okay, so that's super fun. Um, so over here, you see there's lots of potential on this side to do the same kind of thing. So let's see if I can do it a little more fluently. So we've got black here, so I'm gonna pull the black kind of coming out from this blackness and circle some happy spaces. Did someone paint post the uh, Bob Ross thing in this group? Was that here? So fun. Okay. So the idea then is to, to merge it to different colors. So I'm going to have some black circles. I'm going to put black circles around in the colored areas. Hmm. Mm. So now I want to keep that green. I'll try some of that light blue again to go around this guy. Whoa, just became smaller. And add some yellow to turn it into green. More blue, more yellow, more green, whatever you want. That's another one of those circles, isn't it? So now I'm gonna transition. Can you see this? Try to get you as close as well. So I'm gonna transition from this black to this green with some, let's see, we got this turquoise here. It blends easily. Then we can go 
into the darker blue here. Kind of blend it in. Got this purple, dark purple. Oh, look at, oh shit. Oops, I got a drip. God, that never happens. Just kidding. Okay, now let's make that circle stand out with some black. Maybe a big black. So we got to look up. Does anyone want to look up what those balls symbolize? So now I want to blend that. So I'm going to use more of this darker blue. It's a cerulean blue. It's not actually that dark, but I never use cobalt for some reason. So we're going to blend out with the blue. And this is a way then to bring some of this first layer right okay here we go so now oh yeah now we're creating see this is it's funny this stuff normally happens when i'm just plain but that's how we learn can't take ourselves too seriously so we're just blending all these things back around back to the black I just keep layering. I, don't, I didn't really mean to do that, did I? I meant to keep the blue. Well, now I gotta wait for that to dry. I can help it. So then, okay. Sometimes things don't go according to plan, right, ladies? I mean, I'm digging it. I like how there's, so now the background, we've got lots of different things going on in the background. This side maybe wants a little more stars there. Okay, let's see, let's get a real light color. Let's put a star in right here. suggest a star. Remind me that I want to put a star there. Okay, I have to wait for this to dry. The other thing is I can just put a bunch of fun color in there. I need more magenta. Apparently, I'm getting schooled on patience today. Waiting. Well, that actually kind of worked. Got to make this point stand out more. Okay. Then I can put some black dots around there. Yeah. I think I'll have to put some gloss or something. It wants to be shiny. Okay. So what do we do with all that up there, that corner? I like this kind of glowing thing here. Going back to the, what used to be just the white palette. And yeah, plain, that's my biggest goal, is to be like lighthearted. So I see this white kind of glows. Oh. White got 
dirty already. And this one has the star from the middle showing through. Oh, this got black because my water, so. So we've got this dot coming out. See how these symbols just end up repeating themselves without even any conscious effort. And the idea with this Make Your Mark canvas is that, well, with all the canvases really, right, is that it's kind of like I don't even want to finish Buddha today because this will be my laughing Buddha medicine when I need to lighten up a little bit. I can come paint on my Buddha. Right? Painting Buddha, the Buddha that's in, you know, the more traditional Buddha that's in the Buddha painting class was the first time I really like felt and felt like I painted super different. Like I felt different painting Buddha and um, it was like, oh, so what you paint makes a difference. Oh yeah. So you know what I'm getting? Of course, is all these little orbs want to have these stars. So do I? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The not planning, ladies. Does anyone feel like you? are kind of trying to plan so much, right? Like, make sure everything works. Hi, Roberta, hi, Mandy, hi, Sharon. So here's Buddha right now. We're kind of working on his Orbeez cosmic background a little bit. And this theme from Newt and from the mandala at the beginning is coming through again. Love it. Need new water. And like the slowest water pressure. Okay. So we're going to kind of recreate some of. that energy around this. Uh, the only way color is really going to show up on the black is if it has some white in it. Right? The white makes it more opaque. Painting over blue is definitely, orange is not gonna. Okay. And then, I've got some black around this, which I love. I love how the black creates this contrast. Okay. Now we've got spinning orbs with the white. I think I'm slightly um, procrastinating the face. Am I? Maybe it's starting to feel like a lot of painting as far as maybe face wants to wait until later. So I just can't resist putting down This again, curious. This is my symbol to remind me of 
the magic that's everywhere. If I look for it, expect it, expect it. Okay. Everything can be refined, right? A lot of times people, and Kate, you mentioned this about painting over, feeling like you've lost your fun first layer. So the first thing is, again, just not to sweat it. And then you can very often kind of get that fun first layer back again, but you know, you just gotta stay open to the fact that it's available. Okay, so these are his little, the balls that he's normally holding in his hands. Did anyone look up with those balls? So the, a lot of the laughing Buddhas, come on wrist, um, are holding these like orbs in his hand. They look like balls. Not like balls, balls. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So I do want to bring some more color back because like all this white arm, who needs, who needs that, right? So let's see, I've already got um, some of that blue and the purple. I'm going to get a little more of this blue. It's being kind of thick coming out. So when you're doing um, anything that's potentially 3D, so like kind of a go-to. Um, oh, wisdom. Kate, you're the balls. Did someone say, ah, did someone say? Okay. Um, cool colors, like the blues and purple will always look further away and warmer colors, yellow, anything with yellow in it will look closer. So what that means is when we're doing bodies and everything we can take any cool colors so like purple and we can put them on the edges so i'm going to kind of stagger this purple and then go in with some blue in places because when you use the same color like over and over without um, kind of breaking it up, um, it makes the painting a little too predictable. I remember way back when I had the art center, um, I had this older gentleman who taught watercolor and he's the one who said, one, he recommended not painting right out of the bottle ever. Like always add just even something else to whatever tube or pan or whatever you're using. Like just don't use the color as it comes exactly. Um, and then to kind of skip the lines. Um, so you don't have like one big long continuous line. And that um, creates an illusion of movement so that's why I'm not going blue, just blue or purple. So that gives us a little bit, and I could take some pure white if I wanted. I don't know if this is gonna be like covering up more. If I put white in the middle and at the top up here, because I kind of want this to look glowing. I almost always end up using my fingers at some point. I feel like there's a, um, I'm getting a whisper about receiving. I was doing a private super soul flow session the other day and we talked about receiving and how difficult that can be. Kind of ironic, I feel like, when 
like who doesn't want to receive, but we just have a hard time doing it. Okay, so now his, um, I think his arms look like they're standing out too much, but I'm not going to sweat it. And actually, a better thing to do would have been to wait to paint this necklace until I kind of got this highlighted. I don't know if you can tell how the white is making, like it kind of bring, it brings things forward, right? So this belly, you got to rub the Buddha belly. And if I end up going over the necklace, I can just bring the outline back in. That's... That happens a lot where I have to bring a color back in. So just how easy is this? Watch. If, which I don't even really, don't need to do it right now. There. But just so you can see. I think it has a bead here. Right? And then the, the mala. Mala, for your mala. I don't know, maybe Buddha needs tattoos on his arm. What I could have had is, um, I could add another, ooh, I could add another part of his sleeve. Should we just try that? Let's just do it to be brave. Okay, so what does that mean? So if we echoed this up, right, just repeated this shape up a little bit and then brought it around two. Now he's just gonna have a double. It'd be so nice if it was like this in real life, right? You just add it on, paint it on. There we go. Do we want that color to, that could be, that could be more of the purple maybe. We'll do a little more magenta-y purple. Bring that color in a bit more. Though it's going to be wet. Dry, dry. I don't want to learn patience today. I just want you guys to see this. How easy it is to create change. All right. I mean, we get, we align with that while we're painting, even though it doesn't feel like it's that easy, maybe sometimes to create change in our lives, but with the canvas, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's better. Add a little white here. Okay, this, this is dry now, so this can be Better and better. Let's go back into the red here, because oh, that was a that was the fold I was making, wasn't it? Okay. Well, that looks way more better, doesn't it? Don't you think? Any more comments? Okay. I, did you guys paint today? It's okay if you didn't, but I saw what some of you were painting. Okay, so here's Laughing Buddha now. So now I feel like his necklace wants some of that purple and pink. So let's just see. We'll put it in there. You can always put gold on top of the... There's something... Um, I love painting the beads on the Buddhas. 
brushes and a very good round brush. Well, for making these little circles, but again, we're choosing to resist the patience lesson being offered to me, which we're free to do. It's really about like bringing the color in, right? Oh, that looks, I like it. It's funny when I look at it in the phone, I can see it better. It's funny, sometimes this brush behaves and sometimes it doesn't. That doesn't sound familiar. could do some red in there switch it up right so when you do different colors on the beads it makes it look like there's different um, you know like the lights hitting it differently there we go like it like it okay the next easiest thing to do for this face how are we feeling about the eyes They look pretty eye-like, don't they? I haven't picked up on too much. So the inner, in this eye, all got kind of, um, oh, what's the word? The white is too white compared to the yellow. And of course, to make this look further back, we would add cooler. So let's, we're gonna start another tofu palette and put just, I'm going to put two things of white in here. Because I'm just wondering if I add just the teeniest, teeniest bit of blue into some white, kind of like how the yellow is on his face, just a little bit, and put that in here. This brush has that stray. Bristle. Okay. Maybe a little more. Because that still looks pretty white, doesn't it? Well, it's hard for you guys to see. Okay. Adding a little more blue. You can see the difference. That's kind of, right, because the eye squinting, laughing, it has that little curve in it. Well, that helped, didn't it? <laughs> okay, but so now I gotta kind of blend this blue out a little bit. I'll just leave it. I'm kind of spreading it around the blue. Whoops. I guess that was meant to be. So just on the edges is where I'm going to put anything with the blue. Okay. Let's get to a little bit of the yellow here. I'm going to get green now. I just want these eyes to not... Black brush. See, there's so much texture to this canvas, I just have to keep. Okay. So then I want to. Add some more pure white, if possible, to all these 
kind of white places again. Places that would naturally stand out more. Oh yeah, just jolly old cheeks. He looks a little more, yeah, he does. So I wonder if under the nose, since under the nose would be a little more shaded if I add a little bit. Just a little bit of the blue. So I need that black brush again. I should have put it back. I do that more because it just makes my, again, kind of my mind's eye go, Whoa. oh yeah, he is looking happy. Okay, let's see, go into this again. Oh yeah, jeez. Hi, Kristen. Oh, thank you. He's glowing. I like glowing. Michael, he makes me happy. I haven't painted yet, but planning on soon. Oh, good. Patrizia Ferrari, hello. My parents are in uh, Turin. I don't know if you live in, hi, Cindy. Um, I don't know if you actually live in Italy, but you sound, your name sounds like you do. One of my favorite places. Okay, so I think we can put a little more fun in his earlobes. <laughs> Let's just put some pink. And then, you know, we can put like a dot of orange. Just for fun, we can do a little. Just add some little something, something. What are we gonna do around here? Oh, but I want the white up there. He's gotta have some sort of third eye thing. And that's, that was the middle, that was the starting point, right? Oh, I think we need some fluorescent pink. Okay, can see all this in there? I'm gonna, I'm just using um, this Blickrylic stuff. It's a studio, it's not expensive. Pretty much use it for everything. Every once in a while, you know, I like the fluid, the golden fluids and all that, but. Okay, so what if we do that? Do you have double? Hmm? Maybe. Does he have a fluorescent pink forehead? <laughs> oh my gosh, too funny. Too, too funny. It's like Bob Ross, it's your world. Make it whatever you want. You know, what's a laughing Buddha without a fluorescent pink forehead? Of course, this um, bindi isn't exactly lined up. But since it was there, I think it's so fun. This stuff over here looks it had a little black coming through. Yes, painting Laughing Buddha is good medicine. Go 
good, good. I can't wait for, um, like, the first person to come in here that hasn't been in my house for a while but remembers and be like, what? Too bad the internet guy already came. Had to get some new internet. I just, did I do that? Oh my gosh, you guys. I just felt Buddha giving me permission. Not that I need permission, but like I just felt the like, and that's it for today, folks. Zrinka, hello. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, right? Look at him. Oh, oh, laughing Rainbow Cosmic Buddha. I feel like um, that shit New Age girl say. Have you guys watched that? Um, what's her name? Go on YouTube. I'll, I'll post the link below. But it's shit New Age girls say. And it's, what's the woman's name? She's beautiful Asian woman. Woman and... Um, freaking hysterical i'll i'll post the link below but i feel like that so much because <laughs> i say funny things cosmic rainbow laughing buddha thanks micah i love him yeah oh my gosh so walk into the kitchen oh hey whitney blah 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 what i mean how can you not laugh right and it almost looks like he's really there, just sitting, like sitting there. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, hey, Buddha. I love it. Well, thanks for sharing this experience with me and helping me create space for me to paint all afternoon. That felt super good. And um, I appreciate you all so much. Did you see, like Deirdre posted below, and others of you have done that, that even if... They haven't been participating, they're checking in and um, getting to see your art. Um, oh, cool, Zrinka. Um, getting to see your art that you post and all the comments and supporting each other is just so invaluable. I love it when I post something, when you guys comment, say hi. Um, you're a beautiful inner circle for me here and um, it's super fun. And oh my gosh. It feels like a portal completely, right? Like, so alive. And you know why he's looking, I think it, he's feeling that way because of adding the cooler colors around the edges and the white in the middle and the belly and the head and all that. That really makes things pop if you want that. Maybe you want it to look flat. That's fine too. So anyway, may this laughing Buddha create laughter and happiness and a lightness of being for you. Um, yeah, thanks, Jamie. Um, Rainbow makes you think of color therapy. Oh my God. I have um, a whole set of shocker glasses. Have you guys seen those Rainbow Opt X? They're pretty fun. Um, Halloween, I like meant to bring them and forgot. Um, but yeah, maybe the rainbow, I mean the rainbow just, I mean, it's a symbol for all kinds of things, right? My paraglider is a rainbow wing. Um, but I think it is possibility and magic. And then, of course, all of our chakras being kind of aligned. And I don't know. But I can't get enough rainbows. And um, so I hope you enjoyed sharing this with me. Let me um, take this off. Oh, good. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so here he is. I really like this whole thing is so dang fun. I hope you practice that and you saw me kind of stumbling with it, but um, that's good. I'm gonna work on all these stars over here. Kind of this, just blending the boundaries okay, wait. between, you know, positive and negative space. Our human, um, This modern Western world has created and encouraged this rigidity, you know? And the truth is, is there are like no boundaries. There are no boundaries. And be really, really, really conscious of, like be a curator of your thoughts, especially right now. 
and this week, those of us in the US, big things happening, just focus on what's possible. And remember that we learn through contrast and paint symbols that are supportive of you, um, put things around your house, work with sacred geometry, Metatron's cube, pick up your unstoppable dream, your rise above. Like all of these writings and teachings really have nothing to do with teaching you how to paint. It's all about how can we remember, remember we teach what we want to learn, how can we remember how to live as artists and how to appreciate all of life's experiences and to hold to our core in the middle of the storms that um, that even the challenges, even the dark spaces are here to love us, are here to teach us, to make us stronger, right? Um, that is the call right now. And we can do it. You can do it. I can do it. Together, so much easier to do it, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and be laughing Buddha. Okay, mwah. love you too, Micah. Bye, everyone. Have